Today I'm going to talk to you about how to measure the unloaded Q of a microwave resonator when you only have one coupler port inside the resonator. Instead of two coupler ports that you can measure transmission, how do you do this with one? This has come up for me in the past when working with microwave filters and I needed to know the Q of individual resonators. I would detune all the other resonators and there would be one antenna available in each resonator that I could use and so I needed to measure the Q. I worked this out from Graf and Matai, Young and Jones and from some expressions involving uh, voltage standing wave ratio that I will talk about a little bit here. In the measurement you have a generic microwave resonator which I depict as a rectangle. You have a cable coming in and perhaps a center conductor of the cable is an antenna or you may have a waveguide attached to the resonator cavity. A directional coupler is used to bring in the microwave power from a sweep generator which provides you the time dependent frequency that you need to actually do a sweep of a device. The directional coupler scoops up the reflected signal and sends it to a scalar network analyzer or a vector network analyzer and this works with either case. You don't need very much coupling out of the directional coupler. I think I use a 30 decibel coupler in my measurements. If you're using a vector network analyzer, you don't need the directional coupler because the S-parameter test set integrates all of that into it. With only one port on the resonator, the reflected signal on the network analyzer will look like the opposite of a resonance. At resonance, you have a minimum amount of reflected power, and away from resonance, all of the power is reflected. So if you look far away from resonance, I would consider this to be the case of all of the power being reflected, and on resonance, some of it is reflected, some of it is leaked into the resonator. In order to find the unloaded Q, we'll have to resort to voltage standing wave ratio. Voltage standing wave ratio is computed from the magnitude of the return loss, so let's talk about that. You have a value of return loss out of band. That is considered the case where all of the power is reflected back from the resonant device. And then you have a return loss on resonance. The difference in decibels is delta S sub 1 1 R, R being for on resonance. If you want to calculate the standing wave ratio anywhere, voltage standing wave ratio or standing wave ratio, it's 1 plus the magnitude of S11 divided by 1 minus the magnitude of S11. Where the magnitude of return loss is calculated from just 10 to the minus return loss in decibels over 20, where delta S11 sub R is the depth of the reflection dip in decibels. There are two cases that we have to be aware of. In the event of weak coupling, we'll have a simpler calculation. In the event of stronger coupling, it's more complicated. The cutoff is about 2.5 decibels, so we'll do that at 2.5 decibels. I'll call it case 2 if we're below it and case 1 if we're above it. I call them case 1 and case 2 in that order because I'm going to talk about the more complicated case first. Well, in the event that the coupling is strong or the dip is more than 2.5 decibels deep, we'll have to resort to a very old result from Matai, Young, and Jones using standing wave ratio. SWR is related to the return loss, quite straightforward, and if you're outside of the resonator, the SWR goes to infinity because you're reflecting all of the power back. On resonance, the SWR is something. It could be 2 or 8 or 12, but it's something. And between resonance and out of resonance, it, it heads towards infinity. There's a place between resonance and out of band where the SWR reaches the value that that particular Lorentzian resonance has. And Matai, Young, and Jones gave us this nice graphic that relates the standing wave ratio to the standing wave ratio on resonance. We took a little bit of interpretation of this graph to, make, to reach the conclusion that that's what it means, but that is what it means. So I just took numbers from that graph and created a polynomial that fit that. And so I have this polynomial fit that I rely on and you can use as well. Whenever the return loss dip is deeper than 2.5 decibels, use this to calculate delta SWR, which is how much higher the standing wave ratio is at the point where you've measured the unloaded Q. And the separation between those points on the other side is the delta F in the unloaded Q measurement. Now, if you have weak coupling, it's actually much simpler because that delta SWR is equal to the SWR on resonance. But we have this expression for the more complex case where the 
coupling is strong. We were talking about that first. Looking at the diagram, then delta SWR is the difference between SWR at this point, which I'm just going to call 1, and SWR on resonance. And I'll write it that way, and I'll replace SWR on resonance with the definitional statement that relates SWR to the return loss, and rearrange it a little bit so that you have expression for S11 at this point where we can measure the unloaded Q. So when the return loss, this is in magnitude still, is equal to this value, you can put markers at these two places and measure the delta F. So let's summarize that procedure here. First, measure delta S11 at resonance. That's the depth of the reflection dip. Use the definition of standing wave ratio to calculate what the standing wave ratio is at resonance. And then use this value that you just got, SWR resonance, combined with this expression up here to calculate delta SWR. And use this delta SWR along with SWR at resonance in this expression to calculate what delta S11 needs to be. Put it in decibels. This is in magnitude. And then you put one marker on either side of these calculated delta S11s. It's the value below the out-of-band value. So delta S11 is this distance from where you are out-of-band to where you need to be. And the separation between these two points is the delta F that you use to calculate the unloaded Q. So you divide that delta F into the resonant frequency and you have it. Now in the event of weak coupling, it's a little simpler because now delta SWR is simply SWR on resonance. So this delta SWR is whatever it is here. So if your SWR on resonance is 3, then delta SWR is 3. And so you go to the frequency where your standing wave ratio is 6, and you put markers there. We're not even going to look at SWR then. Let's take this expression that we had a couple slides back, that delta SWR is delta SWR at this point 1 minus SWR at resonance and replace the SWR at this point 1 with the expression for SWR and replace delta SWR with SWR at resonance. Insert in this expression for SWR at resonance based on the depth of the return loss dip, delta S11, and solve for delta S11. And we have a working expression that we can use. Take that solved delta S11 to the network analyzer and search out the frequencies where the return loss has dropped that much from the out-of-band value. And you have a delta F that you can then use to calculate the unloaded Q, which is the resonant frequency divided by delta F. Let's go into the lab and convince ourselves that this works. So now we have the cavity resonator in front of us. It's a rectangular metallic cavity. It's empty inside. It's the same one I used in the other demonstration videos, only now I've removed one of the antennas, so there's only one antenna, and you can see there's a hole where the other antenna was in the side of the cavity. So there's a single cable going into the cavity measuring the S11 response of the single antenna, and you can see it's not pretty. It's at 4.935 gigahertz, just like the other videos, but there's all this standing wave background, and I need to subtract that out to get an accurate measurement. In order to subtract out the standing wave background, I need to detune the resonator. So I detune the resonator, and now all I see is the background standing wave pattern, which I can calibrate out. So I push Calibrate, Menu, Response, Open, and it treats the cable with the antenna as something that has to be subtracted from the response which is done by calculating the calibration coefficients. I'm left with a flat line. If I turn on a marker, I'll see that the flat line is at the reference level and it's at zero. Now tune the resonator back in place. So with a nice flat background, I'll turn on two markers put marker 1 at the low frequency end of the trace and for marker 2 I'll turn on tracking and set search to minimum and I see that marker 2 is 
2.244 decibels below marker 1. Or rather the depth of the dip delta S11R is minus 2.244 decibels. Because the depth of the return loss dip was less than 2.5 decibels deep, we can use the simpler case 2, which allows us to calculate the positions of the markers from the simpler expression based entirely on the depth of the return loss dip at resonance. Insert in here the calculation of delta S11,1 equals minus 1.1144 decibels from the delta S11 at resonance. So we'll take our delta S11 and put it into the network analyzer. I do this by putting marker 1 way out at the lower frequency edge of the trace. Turn on a second marker and put marker 2 at minus 1.1166 decibels down from wherever marker 1 is. Turn on delta mode, delta reference 1, and move marker 2 around until it is at minus 1.1166 decibels. This number right here. And I think that's as close as I'm going to get it. So now I need to find the width of the resonance at that level. So put marker 1 not way out at the lower frequency edge, but at the same place as marker 2. And you can see then that the difference is 0. But actually I have to put marker 1 on the other side of the peak, also where the difference between marker 2 and marker 1 would be 0. So move marker 1 until the difference between markers 1 and 2 is exactly 0. There are several places on the screen to read it. I'll read it right there, the, the white number right there. And now I need to get the frequency difference between markers 1 and 2. There are quite a few ways to see that on the network analyzer. Set delta ref equals 2, and it displays right on the screen. It says marker 1 to 2 is 2.664 megahertz. That's the delta f for calculating the unloaded q equal to resonant frequency divided by delta f. So 4,935 megahertz is the resonant frequency and divided by 2.664 megahertz to get an unloaded Q of 1,852. This can be compared to the previous video where we did the transmission method and we measured 1,820 for the unloaded Q with two ports. Okay, thanks for watching.